and clean up a messy GTM account. I know where you're coming from, Lauren. We've seen many, uh, many messy GTM accounts. Check to see if old tags are in use. Okay, so that one I got an exciting future uh, rollout for Elevar. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, I guess Anne or Abby, if you all could just uh, drop in the chat if you're seeing any questions that I should pause. All right, so if you're like me, you're working from home. Uh, it's been uh, pretty interesting last month and hopefully you're settling into to the new norm. Uh, I know at Elevar here, we've been doing over the last month is uh, really A, just analyzing where the trend's going in the, in the business, where our customers going, some are, some actually, they were positioned perfectly for this work from home uh, and remote work culture and others, um, over, others obviously on the other end of that. But over the last couple of weeks, we've been seeing um, everything level out uh, in terms of, I mean, there's a lot of sales, a ton of sales going on out there, which is expected. Uh, so hopefully, I mean, this, this training that we're going through today, I mean, a lot of what I'm going through are the exact tactics that, that we go through and we've been doing for many years. Um, all of this still holds true for today, uh, even in the, you know, the uncertainty or unknown that we're in. But so a lot of these tactics still do hold true for today. All right. So let's jump right in here to my promise. So my promise for today is I'm going to give you 60 minutes to teach you everything that, that I know. Uh, again, this is a lot of hands-on things that um, you know, for some of our customers around here, like Mark and Richard and others, uh, what Alex and Katie and myself are going through. So I'm going to share what we do on a regular basis for those that we, we have not had the opportunity to work with on a regular basis, uh, share what we're seeing that, re that really leads to regular growth, um, sharing what we see really up a wide, uh, wide range of our clients and that we've worked with for many years, what we've seen lead to growth in their business. Um, I'm going to try to keep it more how it's done, like more tactics. Um, so as I mentioned, I'll be bouncing around different screens. Uh, and at the end, I'm going to show you how we work at Elevar, you know, what we really do on a day-to-day -day basis and potentially how to get more out of this. Uh, if you are an opportunity to you know, look for new, new products, new services, new solutions, uh, that's cool with you. I'm going to jump in. And I did, has anybody ever gone skydiving? Who's gone skydiving before? My first time skydiving, I surprised my wife for her birthday. Uh, she didn't know it was coming, so um, it was a, a lot of a lot of fun for all of us. Heck no! <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's keep going here. So just go through through the agenda. Um, so this is a, a pros we're calling it the prospect to promoter technique. Um, it's really covering three main tactics. So we'll be going through um, how tagging can protect profits. So I think right now more than ever, it's uh, we're very uh, very heavy into uh, conversion optimization, oops, uh, conversion optimization, but in these times, I think it's very important for us to consider like how do we protect the revenue, retain the revenue that, that we have, retain profits that we have, and hopefully actually get that increase in conversion rate um, on top of it. Uh, number two is we're going to go into how marketing event tagging prevents waste, so wasted spend. Uh, we're going to go, I'm going to show some examples of some, I would consider fairly advanced. I mean, there's you can really take this probably 10 times further than what I'll be going through today, but showing a few examples of customers that we've worked with and, uh, and how advanced marketing tagging has really helped them um, dial in some of their remarketing audiences, advance some of their lookalike audiences, um, and really leverage that to expand their audiences. Uh, number three, gonna go through how monitoring saves time and money. Uh, monitoring is something that's continuing to grow <laughs> in everything that we do. Uh, monitoring and automa automation. So we'll talk a little bit through how that's something we, we've really been pushing for um, at Elevar with all of the you know things that break and technology expanding, uh, how, how we work, and then our own unique offer, just e-com. It's like everyone has these crazy offers going on. So I'll go through our own that we have, and then I'll open up for Q&A. Um, it's going to be very uh, hands-on, so don't be afraid to uh, drop in any technical technical questions that you have. All right, so what you'll learn today as I went through a little bit, um, you learn how to how tagging can increase conversion rates, protect profits, uh, marketing tagging increase ROAS, um, and how monitoring can save time and money. Um, so how's this training a little bit different? As I mentioned in the beginning, if you were on everyone, you, I've, I've been on multiple webinars, so there's just been a lot of webinars um, out there. So how is this training gonna be a little bit different than others? So again, we're sharing exact tactics, tactics that we execute 
uh, we are going to share tactics that we see other brands uh, implement that you can, you know, R and D rob and duplicate for yourself. Um, and then after this training, you'll have two ways to execute and apply to your own business. Uh, so just to set the stage for a, a brief example here. So this is, uh, this is actually going back a year to uh, diamond diamondback truck covers uh, customer of ours. Uh, and basically what they have is they have their like a, a build your own truck. And I, I'm going to be going through this in the front end a little bit so you can see how it works. But so they have the, you actually, the customer goes through, fills out a form and then they basically will, will dial them into the right product with the right specs. You can kind of see here, uh, where it fits the, I've picked the 2015 to 2024 F-150, et cetera, et cetera. So something that we implemented uh, for them is actually extracting that data out. So then the user is actually dialing, telling, telling them exactly like, this is what I have. This is the product that I have is very personal to them. Uh, and we pulled that information out, push that back into Facebook and the Clavio and other advertising sources uh, to help them really, again, personalize their outreach personalize different remarketing audiences and use this data for upsells down the road. And again, as that prospect promoter, uh, turning them into uh, somebody that can speak the language. So if they know I have a, I have a Ford F-150, I'm getting communication that's very specific to me and not something that might be more generic. Uh, so a little bit, a little story uh, about myself. So I started an e-commerce about 13 years ago. Uh, personally worked on or consulted on hundreds of brand sites. Uh, I've seen it all scale wise from, uh, I don't know if we have uh, Steo on here, or a couple others that, you know, in my old career, I, you know, start worked with them when they were pre-launch, you know, eight or nine years ago and, and still work with them today. So I've really seen it all. I've made a ton of mistakes um, in tagging in my life and I've seen a lot of ton of, a lot of errors. Um, so I've been lucky enough uh, to put a lot of that into our processes today uh, to help make uh, what we do a little bit more efficient. Um, so personally, again, I've worked with brands like Rothy's and Steo, and we still work with Rothy's and Tough the Needle, Tough the Needle, Le Creuset, Trevekin, uh, Alex Nani, Rebecca Minkoff, and many more. Uh, and my my core, my what I consider my expertise is is analytics and data. So that's that's really um, why I'm on here doing the the DIY. And I have two two sons. I have a six week old and a 16, 17 month old. Walker and Reese. So when I'm not doing this, I'm usually hanging out with them and my wife, uh, Gabrielle. And a little bit about Elevar. So we, uh, Elevar started about three years ago. We specialize in data uh, analysis and conversion optimization. Uh, so we've handled tagging for upwards of 2,500 stores. Uh, we are an official Shopify Plus partner in the digital marketing vertical. It really boils down to, we do three main things. We tag websites, we analyze them, and we fix them. And that's uh, and fixing them is a broad topic, but in terms of fixing websites, our specialty is, is really in that conversion optimization of using all the data as well as tagging that we'll be going through here in a minute and extracting that out and applying that into different insights and strategies for the site. We have two apps on the Shopify app store. We have uh, one flagship app, which is our SaaS product, uh, where we handle our tagging and monitoring and things of that nature. And then we have uh, our pro or enterprise plans where we work more hands-on with, uh, with customers. Uh, I'm doing the optimization thing, I'm doing the, uh, the social proof consumer confidence. I'm living what I'll be talking about here in a bit. Uh, I'm not too happy about the percentage of reviews compared to installs. We're working on optimizing that. Uh, but so the, there, the, this is one app from the Shopify app store. We have, we've had 33 reviews, 32 five stars. Um, you can see that it's public on the app store. You can see all the, the great reviews that we have from our team. Uh, when we have a Chrome extension that we released uh, January, so about three months ago, uh, we have over 600 users on that already. And that's something that we're heavily investing in to, again, try to automate a lot of the activities that, um, that people like you are doing on a regular basis. So you can check both of those out. Um, all right, time to get into it. So we have the uh, prospect pr to promoter. Um, and this is something that we've started to really build out and uh, not only working with our customers, but just internally is, so we, everyone starts with a data foundation and really for us is we rely on the behavior driven insights. So what are users doing on site? Not necessarily where are they always coming from or what pages are they viewing? So our analytics foundation is very heavy into event tracking um, and analytics. And I, you'll hear a little bit more about the, the new app plus web property for Google analytics that they released um, in July as I'll be talking a little about that. Uh, but that's very event driven. So it's, we're moving away from page views and sessions and more to users and events. 
Um, and that's what we are very heavily invested in on. Uh, the second one here is the what I'm calling pixel power. So this is the, the data collection to personalize experiences. So this is exactly back to that Diamondback truck covers where we want to take behavior from what users are doing on site and we want to enable our other marketing channels to leverage that. Um, and this is gonna be even more important over the next couple of years as browsers are cracking down uh, and you know, all the different cookie policies, GDPR policies, et cetera. We, so brands and businesses like you, are, it's gonna be even more important to extract that, that information from your customer um, from the site if you are not able to rely on a cookie. Uh, cookies in a couple of years, uh, they may be, they may be gone forever, but in terms of like cookie history lasting more than seven days, um, that we're pretty much there already with most browsers. And then on top of that, we have monitoring. So saving, basically saving time on activities that should be automated. Uh, I think in, in our industry, especially right now, where it's, it's, we're almost living day by day, trying to really figure out like, where do we, where can we maximize our time spending that time on the $10,000 rocks and not the $10 tasks. And that's where monitoring, I think is going to continue to grow in our industry. Um, so we're not spending time, you know, on the monotonous repeatable activities that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. And then of course, the, the top of the pyramid here is really just two to three insights per week leading to improvements. And this is that incremental step-by-step -step improvement. Uh, so what do I mean by that? So this is an example of an Elvar customer, nameless, uh, but this is just showing uh, back in mid-September, we really just started working with them. They had no behavior analytics, nothing going on. We implemented a round of event tracking to try to extract more information. That led into uh, some incremental tests that were, uh, we were helping implement. And then you can just see over time, it was a, a slow progression, obviously through the holidays, you're gonna see a spike through there. But uh, even to today, we're, we're seeing that uh, conversion rate really just, it's, we just, it, it lifted, it lifted from where they were on a regular basis because they had more data, they understand, they understood more about their users. Uh, all right, How, how's everyone doing? Um, any, can everyone still hear me? Can you see me? Uh, can you see the slide deck? Are we all good? Everyone is still alive? Okay, awesome. Thanks, thanks everyone. So back to our uh, boom. All right, boom, says Carlos, I like it. Um, all right, so uncover insights hiding your website. So this is gonna be tactic number one. So what, what is uh, event tracking? Yeah, I, I know, you know Patrick, and there's a couple others on here that um, I consider more in the expert space, but there's some, some that you might, event tagging and event tracking might be new to you. Uh, so event tracking, basically what many of us, and, and not just us and you all, but what we've seen in the industry is rely on Google Analytics very heavily for source medium reporting. So landing page analysis, an occasional view of enhanced e-commerce reporting, which if you're like many that, that we work with, you don't get as much value out of those reports uh, that you should. Either you don't trust it, it's not accurate, something broke a couple of months ago, so you don't have the historical view into that. Um, so you're not really able to drive improvements for that. Uh, the other thing, it just takes a lot of time. So uh, when we first launched Elevar three years ago, one of the first things that uh, our product did was was automate analysis because that was just the pain point when I was at an agency is just pulling the same reports over and over and over again to look at the same data points to see, okay, is that good or is it bad or where where is the, the leaky bucket, so to speak. So event tracking is basically looking at a product page. So this is a Rothy's product page and dissecting out the different elements on a page. So for example, uh, image thumbnail views, are there particular, is it a lifestyle shot that's leading to conversions or is it, you know, the, the lay down shot? Um, interactions with reviews. So are, are people that, inter the segment of users who interact with reviews, are they converting higher than others? Uh, size charts, uh, upsells, so it might be pretty small on the screen. Uh, adding the colored insoles. How are all these little different activities, how are they leading to higher or lower conversion rates? Um, so that's really when, when I'm going through event tagging and event tracking, I say that uh, throughout the next hour or so, this is really what I'm referring to here is those small little interactions that users are taking that are more click-based and not page view based. Uh, so what, where does that data out ultimately go? So you can view that data in analytics. We pull that data in a little bit of a different way in Elevar, but basically if you take that, and this isn't Rothy's data, by the way. Uh, 
So I don't, since a lot of the events are similar here on the product page, but a couple of things that stand out just looking at this event data is uh, if you look at the size guide. So the size guide, uh, people that interact with the size guide, they have a 10% conversion rate. And I'm gonna show an example that uh, Alex actually helped set up uh, for one of our customers here. I'm gonna show you know, how we use that data to um, help drive an improvement for, for their site. Uh, the pre-order add to carts. So the pre-order add to carts, if you look at uh, the conversion rate right now are, is 22% for this, this particular example, but it used to be 36%. So it's, it's a, almost a 40% drop in conversion rate. So this, this data is very relevant. If you think about, uh, almost said the name who it was, but think about where, where they are. It's if they're a global, global company, they're selling you know, not just to, in the States or selling across the world. Uh, shipping obviously right now is something that is, it, it's, a, it's a hot button issue. So from here, we could take information out and say, okay, do we need to be more explicit in, um, in our shipping policies, in the, the packing and handling policies, um, so if we can see these different activities that are dropping, and you can see these different activities that are either improving or or dropping over time, that's where you take you take this insights, this particular insight, and then go either implement a change or implement an A/B test or work with your team. But really, a lot of this data is you can look at this data all day. Uh, really, I like to look for big outliers, uh, both good and bad. So what's trending up? What has a high volume in sessions? What has a big change in conversion rate? Um, and then just use that to drive optimization ideas uh, on site. So that's a little bit of background. So you tag the site, you pull that data into analytics. I'm gonna show um, another example here inside of GA and then pull that out into different insights to determine you know, what, what you should be doing on site, what you should change. Uh, so frustrations, I still have these. So what are frustrations with event tagging? Um, especially if you're new or if you're uh, experienced. Um, so they're time consuming. So tagging a site can be very time consuming, especially if they're a little bit more complex. Um, so it can be 15, uh, 15 to 20 minutes per tag, depending on what type of tag it is. Uh, there's regular changes that are uh, happening to the website. So you, you, you are, all, especially if you're doing rapid deployments, rapid changes to the site, um, you're having to continually go through and add new tags or edit tags. Uh, to keep up with it. Uh, complex, so tags are very complex. I'm terrible at puzzles. It would take me probably a year to put a puzzle together like this. Uh, and tagging for some can be the same way. So the, the one thing with uh, tagging, or I'm calling it tagging, but it's not the same for Google Analytics or Facebook or AdWords, et cetera. Uh, if you just look at the naming convention for, for Chrome extensions, you have the GA Tag Assistant you have the Facebook pixel helper, you have Twitter events helper, whatever they call it. So there's different naming conventions, different nomenclature, and that if you're not doing this on a regular basis, on a daily basis, is very, it can be very conf confusing, and it can just, confusion causes complexity, um, and they're like, I just give up, I'm not, I'm not even gonna touch it because I don't know what I'm doing and I can't understand it. Um, so it's very easy to get lost in jargon soup with the complexity and naming conventions of tagging and how it applies to your site. Uh, and I would actually say, uh, historically, before plug here, the Chrome extension we created, uh, creating tags is a, was a technical task. Um, you have to go back five to 10 years ago, it was you had to create a big spreadsheet, you had to have the development team actually implement all the on-click event tracking. I'm um, in the code base, uh, Google Tag Manager came out and that you know, they made it a little bit easier as they had built-in uh, click triggers. And that's continuing to evolve because, so it is becoming less technical, uh, but I still consider that a technical task, uh, especially if they are more complex events uh, that you need to create. And with headless sites today too. Uh, third fr frustration for event tagging is it's always changing. So I mentioned a little bit earlier about Google Analytics. So Google, as an example of a change, Last July, Google Analytics released their new App Plus Web property tracking. So it was basically their, they, it was, was their Firebase tracking for apps, so offsite apps. Uh, and now they are making uh, this available for the web. Uh, the, the really interesting thing about this is it brings a lot of the Google 360 features, um, like custom pathing, their custom funnel builder, uh, a, a bunch of other features that moves that into the free version. 
and this it's a completely new way of tagging so this this gets away from the whole session and page view completely it's all user event track um, it's still in beta but they are rapid i think almost weekly they're rolling out new updates for it so again it's always changing which can be frustrating especially if you go through and complete um, tagging and then you get the the carpet pulled out from underneath you and then the browser and privacy changes so again this is another thing that's uh, for those that are very active in tagging you need to understand okay do i need consent before these tags can fire etc so these these uh these changes if this isn't going away things are going to continue to change probably even quicker i know that there was a a great graph and i didn't grab it for this but simo who i would consider the godfather of google tag manager and you might have been on one of his articles in the past he was just showing over time like last 10 years of the frequency of changes that browsers are, are pushing out to really protect privacy so things are always changing why bother with event tracking analytics in the first place um, so we need to analyze so i've yet to, to see or meet a brand that does not want to increase their conversion rate um, or doesn't want to improve the performance of their website even our own site i want it it underperforms in my opinion we need to improve the, the performance of it so needing to analyze web performance uh, focusing on analysis is what's going to be it's going to move the needle faster uh, and focusing on analyzing your behavior. So what are people doing on the site? And less on the vanity metric. So by vanity metric, I, would, I mean just opening up the source medium, looking at bounce rate or time on site or pages per session. Those, those aren't gonna give you, uh, they give you some, they, they do give you some insight, but it's very limited. And it's, I think if you were to uh, think about like a dartboard and use that data to make a decision on what changes to make with your site, uh, it has a very wide range. I think with event tracking, it just moves that into a little bit more of a closer bullseye where your uh, your percentage for successful changes to the site increases when you have that more granular data. Uh, so we all need to increase conversion rates, uh, but it is complicated. So let's take these two scenarios that are very real today. Um, you hold a 50% off flash sale. So your conversion rate spikes if you are anyone's measured on conversion rate, you are celebrating, going crazy, crushed it, uh, but your average order value drops. So you just run a site-wide off uh, 30 or 40% off sale, conversion rate goes up, average order, average order value stays the same, so your revenue basically ends up flat. And then you have the WTF, what happened? Uh, so that's, that's one example that can make conversion rate optimization very uh, complicated. Uh, the second is we have uh, another exa example of doubling down on, cam on a campaign from Facebook. So if you see some early success, you just double down, maybe 10 extra traffic, sessions double, but they don't convert, conversion rate tanks. And if you are looking just in your aggregate view and analytics, you're going to see a 30% drop in conversion rate. You might be thinking, I need, to, I need to blow up the entire site. I need to start over. I need to redesign. However, if you just segment down into that specific campaign that was making up 40% of your sessions. If you extract that out, that paints a different uh, picture on what your conversion rate's actually doing. So like one campaign or, or large uh, influx of traffic that is unqualified, uh, you're not doing anything personalized, et cetera, that can make uh, conversion rate look worse than what it really is. So that, that's two opposite ends of the spectrum of examples here of uh, things when you're trying to analyze conversion rate, see where to improve of what went, what went wrong. Uh, this is one of my favorite slides. This is the dream versus reality scenario check when embarking down conversion optimization. Uh, in the dark blue, you're gonna see the dream that we see quite often. Once a brand starts with a conversion optimization, if you've never, never done it before, or if you're starting to do analytics tagging, uh, you're thinking, okay, you, not you, Everyone who's on here is not part of this group, but those, the other ones that are not on this call, they, they are the dark blue group. Uh, you started about half percent conversion rate and then you're thinking in two months, we're gonna do all this work and our conversion rate is gonna go out of three to 4%. That, to me, that is unicorn status. It doesn't happen. Uh, it's just, it, it doesn't exist. I've seen it like a couple of times and it was years ago when sites were, upgrading, migrating to a newer platform and their old site was just, it was almost unusable. Um, Scout Bags is actually an example. Uh, they, they were one that comes to mind where their old site goes to new site. And this, I'm talking like eight or nine years ago, but 
Other, otherwise, since the, the sites and user experience for platforms now, especially Shopify, make it so easy to spin up a new site that is functional, follows a lot of best practices, getting that 4X in two months just doesn't really happen. What happens is it's a slow step-by-step uh, -step process. Um, so the reality line is just light blue where you just, you have to build that consistency over time. And that's where, yeah, I mentioned a lot of our, the, our landing page and the content is where we've seen customers actually double their conversion rate. It's, it's not in this two month period. It's, it's over six, 12, 18 months where it's just been a iterative, iterative process over time of, uh, you know, not trying to bite off too much at once is just taking things slow and moving along. Uh, so, you need to have a clear picture of who the user is um, and what is impacting their decision. So with event, again, going back to event tracking with its first tactic, it's, um, it's understanding uh, that you're not really, you're not gonna have a one-to-one -one unique experience for every single user. So that's a fallacy in, in my opinion. Uh, you're not, I don't believe that anyone can really get there where it's a true one-to-one -one experience, but you can get the, the cohort. So a very basic cohort would be a new versus returning, but. Uh, if we go back to that example of event tracking where the user or that uh, the event for the worldwide uh, shipping um, interaction, you know, that could be a cohort. If we know the users are in XYZ country and they're actually interacting with that particular part of the site, yeah, I think personalizing for that is doable. And by adding that tracking to your site, you can start to leverage that tracking, um, not only in analytics for, for analyzing the past, but you can leverage that uh, for things like Google Optimize or other tools to personalize based on what a user has interacted with. Uh, so what is another thing that would be important to uh, think about event tracking? Like what, what do you want out of event tracking? Um, so what is unique about your purchase journey? Uh, so with event tracking, and this is really where event tracking comes in is when you're analyzing your site, it's more, there's more to consider than just your purchase conversion rate. Uh, consumers are smart. The, the days of first time impression of an ad uh, coming to the site and then making a purchase, um, they're long gone. Uh, the, they are going to research, they're going to potentially price match or try to get coupons. So breaking down your funnel into micro conversions um, is very important. You can do this through event tracking. Basically what you want to do is find where your leaky bucket is. So these are some examples of what I would consider micro conversions, percentage of email signups, percentage of added carts, percentage of initiate checkouts, video plays, size chart clicks, uh, sizes filtered by, FAQs read, uh, a five second landing page visit versus a 50 second landing page visit. I don't know if anybody um, on, on our landing page, um, I don't know if anybody actually might've looked at the Facebook Pixel Helper, uh, but we were pushing in events to Facebook uh, every 10 seconds. So we can create an audience inside of Facebook. Um, I'm getting ahead in the tactic number two, but telling the story because this data was going to GA as well. Uh, but a user who is on the landing page for us for 60 seconds means so much more from a remarketing standpoint than somebody who was there less than five seconds. The user, going back to the vanity metric, a user who, uh, two users, one that came to the, that landing page, so our, our landing page, and they bounced and they're on there for three seconds versus a user who came to that uh, landing page, browsed around, read, maybe watched the videos on there, didn't sign up, but did leave. They both are bounces, but th those two experiences are completely different. Um, so I'm gonna, just to make sure everyone is still uh, alive, give me a yes uh, if you think that bucket of audience, so a bucket of user who was there for two seconds, versus the user who was on there for 60 seconds or more and maybe watched the video, do you think your ROI on remarketing to a large audience group, do you think you would see a pretty drastic difference there in performance? If everybody could just leave, uh, leave a yes, yes or no or a comment in the chat. All right, see a lot of yeses coming in. Cool, just making sure everyone is still, uh, still alive here. I'm try trying to keep the energy up here. Um, all right, so user behavior. So going just beyond our, uh, going just beyond the page views is, oops, get my notes back here. Uh, so as you can see in this analytics report, I've taken um, custom event data and translated this custom event data into custom metrics. 
So we have the tags. So we have our tags that we, we create through Google Tag Manager. We add them to our site. They are registering based on people clicking video play or email sign up, et cetera. And then we're actually adding custom metrics to those events so we can pull them into a report like this. So this is a standard Google Analytics report. I'm gonna show you um, from our analytics account an example of this here in a second. But what, what stands out in this report versus your standard average source meeting report that is not customized um, inside of GA? So to me, the things that would stand out to me right away in this is so row 10 there at the bottom. So this particular source of traffic, so this Facebook referral, should be evaluated on lead conversion. So let's say this, if this was a paid campaign, depending on the tagging, this was a paid campaign uh, optimizing towards uh, lead conversions might be the best idea for this particular campaign because we see it has such a high percentage of email signups. Um, and this goes back to it's probably the first touch, the first interaction with the site, and they're signing up for an email. And then if you go up one row to row number nine, you can see once they're on email, the percentage of initiate checkout and ultimately getting into conversion is so much higher. So it's it using some of that, those micro conversions, using that information to then drive your, uh, whether it's decisions in marketing um, or if it's decisions in conversion optimization. I mean, this is, this is what you're looking at here are basic Google Tag Manager events or Google Analytics events that we set up in GTM. Um, and we just customize the report a little bit. Uh, and then this same information that we're doing for GA can take out and extract into marketing campaign decisions. Uh, so this, is, this can be very powerful stuff. Again, everyone might be a little different. If you had a quiz, you might, you might have a column for a percentage of quiz starts, et cetera. Um, so before we get into how to tag, um, I just want to show inside of analytics here so let's, this is a simple report I just pulled up here. Uh, I have a custom report, this is our analytics account, and you can see different sessions, and these are all those custom events that I've set up inside of Google Tag Manager. So we can see uh, email signups, 30 seconds on page, played video, social shares, et cetera. Uh, and basically the way that um, that is set up is inside of your property settings. So if you go to custom metrics, there is a feature in here that we see maybe 5% of all accounts we look at utilize this. Uh, so these are custom metrics. You can see uh, we have quite a few on here. And basically the setup of this is super, super simple. You just, you define whether it's a hit or a product like an enhanced e-commerce hit and give a minimum value. So most of the time it's always gonna be zero or one for all the event tracking we set up. We just take this custom metric and then inside of your tag in Google Tag Manager, so this is showing um, an email sign up. So that same event we just looked at in GA, this is that tag inside of G GTM. And there is a additional settings here. So if you go to more settings, custom metrics, index number of two is two. So just going back to GA, uh, you'll see if I cancel this out, um, email newsletter sign up, index number two. And we have this set on tag manager with uh, the trigger assigned to it. So it's as simple as that. So once you have the tags created, Reporting from your site to really what I would consider uh, adding superpower behind them is adding these custom metrics. And then um, you can actually take this one step further. Once you have those custom metrics, um, you can create calculated metrics. So you do have a limit of five, so pick these wisely, but your calculated metrics is uh, what you can actually do to the same event. So again, this is all from that same event created in analytics. Um, this is the custom metric. I'm just dividing it by total users, uh, and that'll give us that report out in GA. So let me just check here. We have a chat that came in. Okay, so the question, so by putting it through GTM and tying it to an event, you don't need to alter any of the code in the back end, correct? Yeah, so the everything I just showed going through, so you, you create the tag through Tag Manager. The trigger, obviously, uh, what I'm going to Go through in a second. Once the trigger is actually attached to that event on your website of somebody signing up for the email, all of this part. So getting getting back to uh, this report like this, that's all done through Google Analytics configuration, and that's it. So you create the custom metric, um, you assign it to the GTM tag, and then you add it to a custom report.
Alrighty. Uh, let's see here. So we have we're gonna get into like a little bit, a little bit more of the DIY. So how to tag your site? Uh, you'll have I could take five hours going through all of this, but so we, I do have videos that will send out with a replay, so you have access to the videos. But this will actually go through in a slower uh, process of how to tag your site. Um, so number one is using Google Tag Manager, map out your tag plan. Don't tag everything. If you have 100 elements on your site, don't, don't waste your time tagging 100 because you'll never look at the data. Um, pick what is important to your business. So where, where, do, you want to, where do you want to know what people are doing um, or where do you know that is a critical path to purchase? Um, focus your tag plan on that. Um, find in and click classes. So this is where it can get a little bit technical. Um, our Chrome extension can help us with some of this. Um, if it's something that is an iframe or if it's a headless site or something else and something might get a little bit uh, trickier, but you do need to find the click classes to uh, ultimately create the trigger. Um, a trigger is basically when someone clicks that sign up or clicks that size chart. That's what I mean by a trigger and what you define through a click class. Um, you create the tag and trigger in GTM and then you publish and analyze. So this video will walk through that on a step-by-step -step basis. Um, how to enrich tags with custom metrics. Um, I got ahead of myself a little bit, but uh, basically the, the custom metrics, again, this is if something is very important to you and you want to evaluate that um, in that report I just showed, we're looking at landing pages, looking at um, your source medium channels, other, um, other dimensions. That's where custom metrics can really help make that process efficient. Um, if also, if you're pulling the data out of GA into a different BI, so if you're pulling a data studio or Looker or something else, that's where custom metrics can, very, can be very helpful as well. Um, and then update tags in GTM, so map the metric index, which I just showed there. Um, how to analyze your event data, uh, build the custom reports, use the calculated metrics, evaluate top landing or product pages. So again, start small. Uh, you don't need to uh, really boil the ocean here in terms of analyzing everything. It's if you want to know like what people are doing on a product page, if you see a big drop off, focus on the product page and get your answers questioned, or excuse me, get your questions answered um, and then move on. So just like keep focus and don't, don't overwhelm yourself trying to answer everything at once. Uh, so I mentioned a little while ago, just a very, very, I would consider this is, if you could start anywhere, if you have FAQs on a site, just tag your FAQs. Uh, and if you're using our Chrome extension, you don't need to tag every single little one. You can just select uh, the entire area and it'll automatically capture those questions underneath. But so basically what, what we saw here with, with Vessi was their FAQs that were buried in the bottom of the page. Uh, and they are, they're basically like in uh, waterproof all birds. Uh, I don't know if they, I don't, Alex, you have to tell me if that's what their tagline is, but that's my tagline for them. Or Allbirds is a non-waterproof Vessi. That's probably better. Uh, so the, we saw a high usage of what size should I get? And all we did was saw that it was substantial. And the, the conversion rate difference for people that interact with that, that actually read through the, the description uh, was significantly higher. And that led to this, what I would consider a very unique um, size selection size chart where on the product page, you, you, can, uh, you can't really see it, uh, but it's a find your fit. You can go to just Google Vessi footwear and you'll see it, but find your fit and it just has a little drawer that comes out and you can select your most two, two common sizes and then they'll, they'll just match you to it automatically and then continue on. So this was a, again, a very, very basic example taking some uh, behavior implementing a new feature um, and seeing a big, big improvement for that. Um, so where to start uh, for yourself? So where's your biggest gap in the shopping funnel? What landing pages have the highest bounce rate? What pages have the highest exit rate? Um, do you have an abandoned, like as, as something as basic as, do you have a abandoned cart remarketing email set up? So a three email sequence. Uh, what type of products have the highest view add to carts? Uh, should you promote more or less? Uh, what generic search campaigns have lowest uh, return ad spend? So these are just some like generic questions that hopefully will seed some ideas that you can ask yourself. So where to start with event tracking with your site? Uh, so if you saw, let's take this last one. Um, if you do have some generic search campaigns that have a very low return ad spend, then if you if we have that event tracking set up, then you can actually create that segment 
Um, just look at behavior for users coming in from those search campaigns and you can compare them to other channels and see if there's a reason or they're not, not getting what, they, what you want them to get to fast enough. Uh, so this is a, just a simple screenshot from our app where we translate some insights into more session-based insights to give us revenue opportunities. And this is, this is why I look, the first time I'm looking at a site, I look at this, just I wanna understand like where the big fall off is in the funnel. And what does that mean dollars wise? Um, this is a different way to look at it than the, the standard enhanced e-commerce report. So for this one, uh, could it, could the, would the product view to add to cart, is that the biggest fall off here uh, compared to like the add to cart to initiate checkout, et cetera. So for you, figure out where your, where your biggest drop off is. Uh, and remember one brick at a time, um, dream versus reality, uh, that this is uh, the go-to chart. Uh, and again, you can get here uh, just an example in real life of how that conversion rate can increase there. Um, all right, so that's topic number one. Uh, I have a couple questions that came in. Give, I'm actually gonna get a drink of water. If you have water, grab some. Uh, if what out of that first tactic, if I could just hear from everybody, what was your biggest takeaway? What do you think was most helpful for you? Uh, what ideas do you have going through your head that you can start implementing um, for yourself? I'd love to hear from everybody in the chat. All right, so we've got a couple coming through. Uh, let me <clears throat> get these questions. Does it, custom metrics, very helpful. Uh, landing page comparison. Yep, so the uh, landing page bounce rate versus the non-bounce uh, questions here. So how, how often do you analyze data? Daily, weekly, monthly. So the daily, weekly, monthly is, this is gonna go back to your time. Um, and I'm gonna go through like time, just general time management towards the end, but the, the reality is I would say daily is too much of uh, if you're looking at that granular event data, because uh, you, especially if you have a lot of campaigns running, you want to give, you want to give those campaigns time to, especially if it's over a weekend where you're going to see a big, uh, big, <laughs> those LVR, that's my favorite comment so far. Those LVR dashboards are clean. Thank you. Uh, thanks Patrick. Uh, yeah. So Carlos, the answer would be weekly as, uh, is, is good um, daily if you have some very high volume traffic, uh, you're spending a lot of money, then it'd be good to look at daily. But sometimes that can be a little bit dangerous too, especially if you're just looking at Google Analytics because data is sampled. Um, and some, some customers are gonna, you're gonna see, I've seen, even now I've seen 12 hour delays um, data coming through. So that can lead to some incorrect decision making. So weekly is a great one to, uh, to shoot for. So a couple other comments here, uh, clean dashboards, custom metrics, uh, custom dimensions, custom metrics, focus on a few small things, uh, build features, help push customer, customers into a purchase based off of content, uh, tracking product page video views, size chart, size chart views to conversions. Awesome. And yeah, I'll, I'll uh, share a, a copy of the presentation as well. Uh, cool. So moving on to our advanced uh, marketing pixel tracking. So don't forget about everything that you just learned because it's very similar, similar to what we're, we'll be going through here. So advanced marketing pixel tracking, it's a mouthful, how to help increase ROAS or in the times like today, how to protect your profit. So really how to try to maintain your revenue with lower costs um, or at the minimum same costs. <clears throat> Oops, keep losing my, uh, here we go. All right, so what is, we'll go through the same process here. So what is pixel marketing pixel tagging? Uh, just to repeat, you have the GA tag assistant, the Facebook pixel helper, the Twitter event builder, the Elevar event builder. Nomenclature can cause a lot of confusion. So pixel tagging is really not that much different. It's just data going to these different marketing channels. So instead of the data, the tagging going to GA, we're sending this data to Facebook or AdWords or Pinterest or Critio, Critio, Clavio, et cetera. So the same interactions that we're tracking for Google Analytics, we want to send to these other marketing channels. So if you have a quiz, if you have PDF downloads, uh, maybe um, a color or phone type filter, uh, so looking at interactions on your collection page, if someone's filtering by a specific color, or brand. Uh, so this is all data, again, 
users are using your website, telling you what they're interested in, and you want to extract this out and push this to your marketing channels to in increase the performance of your remarketing campaigns at the minimum. So just at the minimum of increasing the performance of your remarketing campaigns, obviously dynamic product remarketing and all that and some of the smart campaigns that Google has, I mean, th those are great, those work. Um, in times like today, I, we see a lot of brands that are getting very, very niche and specific on audiences that they're creating um, and just trying to like, just change the messaging up a little bit. Uh, if we go back to that Diamondback truck example or Diamondback covers, excuse me, with a Ford, uh, I might be much more willing as a consumer if I see language in an ad uh, that is talking about a deal on Ford truck covers versus Dodge or Chevy or something else. But if I see it visually, I'm more, uh, I'm more likely uh, to react to that ad. And if we do, can do that in scale, um, you will see an improve, improvement in your remarketing audiences. So that, that's basically, again, it's the same thing. We're just pushing that data to a different channel or, or different channels. Uh, lots of frustrations with marketing tagging as well. Uh, I'm a Maryland uh, Terrapin graduate, so this pains me that I put the slide in here, but the process is slow. Uh, so just like we went through with event tracking, I we believe that because the everything is very different, so the nomenclature is very different when it comes to adding tracking for different marketing channels. Uh, it's slow, it's gonna require a developer or data, or data guru, data, data engineer. Requirements documents all, are all over the place. If you, I know there's some on here that are responsible for implementing tracking. I know that you know what I'm talking about where you get a 50 page requirements doc from Rakuten or Commission Junction, then you have a one pager that has an image uh, without really any technical requirements on how to implement the tags. So that, that just causes things to be very slow. Uh, and then sometimes when it is implemented, some of the requirements documentation is all over the place. Um, there's a lot of errors. So errors that need to be fixed. Um, and that just drags out the process even further because some channels, um, they're not going to start campaigns for you um, until they validate the data is accurate. Uh, it's complicated. Uh, I'm also terrible at Rubik's Cubes. Uh, for some, some might get the same feeling when you're looking at uh, requirements to implement new tracking for a new marketing channel. Like, I don't even know where to start. Um, and then when you think about uh, custom landing pages versus a native theme. So if you're on Shopify, you could have Shogun, Zipify, uh, there's probably five others that I can't think of off the top of my head. But you have all these custom landing pages that use a really different data foundation than your native product pages or collection pages. So if you're relying on like a add to cart event or a view content event or something like that to drive your, your remarketing audiences and you have 40% of your traffic going to, uh, on one of these custom landing pages, um, it's more, more likely they might not be picking up on some of those custom events and sending that. So you could be missing out. That's where some of the complication can, can come in because again, it's not uniform uh, for all the landing page builders as well. Additional complications come in through catalog differences uh, we on our GTM app, uh, Shopify, this is probably the number one question that we get is what, what ID do I need to have? Is it SKU? Is it product ID, variant ID, Shopify underscore US product ID, variant ID? It's very confusing, especially if someone else is responsible for actually pushing your catalog to these channels. Uh, if you're not talking or that communication line is broken, then your marketing, your, again, your, your pixels, they may not be broken per se, they may execute, but the data included in them will be inaccurate. Um, so this is a very, very uh, common frustration that we see is it's, it, it can just be complicated and give you, uh, give you a headache. Uh, inter so the, the third part of the complication is international and third party payments. So a lot of the third party payments, they are taking users off of the domain, taking them to an offsite payment processor, then they send them back, in this case, I want Shopify, send them back to the Shopify thank you page. But it's a, it's really not the thank you page, it's the order status page. So you can start missing out on transactions there. And again, at that having to go through the process of, of trying to recreate that, replicate it, can be very complicated. And last but not least, you have tags breaking. So tags break, like what the heck, why, why do they keep breaking? Um, what, are all, what do all these warnings mean that, I get, that I'm getting if I'm the marketer? I see the warnings inside of Facebook or Google. I don't know what to do with them. I'm gonna forward them on to someone else. 
um, or, or requirements change, new features uh, for the different channels. Last Early last year, AdWords changed their, their uh, data structure for um, AdWords remarketing tagging. And it really aligned with that new App Plus web property for GA. Uh, so when it comes to, to your needs, uh, when, what are your needs when it comes to marketing tagging? Um, so with all of those frustrations, why, you know, why even bother getting, getting into the complexity of it? Uh, so you need tags implemented today. So ultimately it goes back to like revenue, dollars, you need to scale. The example in the beginning of uh, you know, the brand that's moving online and launching subscriptions online and need to really scale it up quickly. Um, you don't have weeks to wait. You need tags implemented today. Uh, so this is thinking about your website is a moat. Uh, you might be able to relate that you feel helpless or frustrated when you're trying to get into the castle or you're trying to get in your website, trying to launch the, the new tags. Um, and you just can't and you're stuck and you're relying, relying on either a contractor or an agency or development team or someone else, whoever it is, you're relying on someone else to go through and implement it. Uh, so it can cause friction between development teams if you are working directly with a development team. Uh, you're changing priorities from them if they're already working on features for you. Um, that's gonna cause friction, distraction, delays in projects. But ultimately, the, your need is if you have a new campaign, a new contract that you signed, you're getting billed from them right away. Um, so every day that those tags aren't live, you know, you're potentially spending money on that. Um, so, the, so not only is it potentially hard, uh, cash cost for you. The opportunity cost is expensive as well. Uh, the number two want that we see uh, from our customers for uh, marketing pixel tagging is standard and advanced tagging. So like we talked about with GA of building the event tracking, uh, build a web of event tracking to remarket across all channels um, where that user is in the journey. So this is, again, think about a prospect, somebody that comes in for the first time and you're trying to get them to purchase and then be a promoter of the brand. Knowing where that user is through that journey um, is critical to match the messaging. And again, I reiterate, you're not gonna have that one-to-one, -one, uh, or I'll believe it when I see it, the one-to-one -one messaging for, you know, if you have 100,000 users, uh, really having that personalized messaging, but having those cohorts. So. The standard events we all know about, the page views, product views, add to cart, initiate checkout purchases, we get those, those make sense. The advanced events, this is where it's unique to you. So the video plays, the subscription purchases, email signups, add to wish list, quiz start and completions. These are all advanced event tracking that uh, is going to be, especially if you are the marketer or the business owner, these are what, this is gonna be your, uh, your secret weapon to help you just even if it's like a 10% or 20% improvement in ROAS, this is going to make you more money. It's your messaging is going to be more clear. Um, and it's, at the end of the day, it's just eventually I think this will be best practice uh, as the marketing channels are, they're going to want more of this data so they can optimize because the more money that you're making, the more uh, optimized your campaigns are, the more money that they're making. So they're, they're inherently incentivized to have you perform. Um, the third want uh, of marketing tracking and marketing event tracking is uh, building personas. So building personas based on user behavior. So this is, uh, this is a quiz. Uh, this is the quiz I had in the landing page and on um, or the video on our landing page. This is a, if I just pop over here, uh, can you all see, I just wanna make sure you can see my screen still. Uh, and can you just let me know in the chat, can you see the cover FX site? Okay, cool, thank you. Uh, so let's go to our find my shade. So again, I'm repeating myself over and over again, but if I'm, I'm physically going through this quiz, I am telling cover FX exact, like very specific attributes about me. Uh, and this data for them is going to Facebook. So this is taking my selection, sending this as an event, as a parameter to Facebook. So now when they have enough people going through this, they can then create audiences for this and then dial in a campaign with imagery, messaging, whatever it is, that's specific based on what I selected. Uh, not even thinking about lookalike audiences. So lookalike audiences is, is an, another layer to this, depending on what kind of data that you're collecting. Uh, that is where you can really, just really use your behavior data to enhance your remarketing campaigns uh, and really help build better look like audiences for your prospecting campaigns. Uh, 
The other thing uh, with Facebook event tracking, so that was just an example of, or excuse me, marketing channel event tracking. So that's an example of the user going through and just doing some basic clicking and going through a process. Uh, but there's what's called custom parameter or, or uh, attribute data. The standard events that even with Shopify standard events, we're not sending data to Facebook, AdWords, et cetera, for things like the lifetime value. So um, if you are sending this data to your platforms, you're sending the lifetime value, they're, you're sending their order total, you're sending the manual advanced matching. When this data is available inside AdWords, Facebook, et cetera, again, you can create audiences based on that um, and create lookalikes. So if you have, if you have a thousand customers uh, inside of, with an, in an audience in Facebook where the lifetime value is greater than $2,000, greater than $3,000, creating a lookalike audience off of that, I mean, that's, that's gold. So this is, a, this is two parts of advanced uh, tracking when it comes to marketing tagging. One is just like, what's the user doing on site? What are they doing on site? And then the second is, what are some unique attributes specific to them? And all of this, I mean, I'm, I'm hopefully I'm not coming off as being tone deaf based on the you know, personal data from a user. I mean, none of, we're not tying this to a specific user. We're not pushing uh, any really specific uh, attributes. So even if we just go back here to cover effect example, it doesn't, that's my pixel. It's not like my name. We're not sending additional data. Uh, oops, let me go here. So just, we're literally just sending the undertone, undertone golden. Uh, so that's, that's a little bit of a insight into the advanced uh, marketing tracking. Uh, and now I got ahead of myself. We already looked at the real, real example, real websites. Um, so cover FX was one, uh, Diamondback covers was another one, uh, Owl Labs. So Owl Labs is another one with the, with a quiz, like just a custom quiz of going through this. I think this is gonna be very rich data, whether it's going to Facebook or Clavio or um, other sites, most of us have these type of questionnaires on our website uh, that we can use to help uh, better segment the message message to the user. So again, understanding where that user is in their journey from just trying to figure out like who Owl Labs is or if they are a repeat customer, loyal customer. Uh, don't even think about Facebook, just think about email. If your email platform has this data, uh, that can that can really improve your targeted messaging um, to them. And this, uh, just going back here to the Diamondback truck covers. So this was that example to fit your truck, just showing the truck and then the Ford name. So this is sent in Facebook, uh, Clavio, other, other examples. And again, that really depends on what, what channels you're using. Uh, most today are accepting this, this type of custom event data to personalize. Um, so how to tag your site for pixels. It's honestly, it's not, not that much different. Uh, you ultimately need the trigger. Uh, if you want to map that journey, same as Google Analytics events, uh, the, um, and I, I know you're on here, I think you're on here still. If you could just grab this link and drop it in chat. Um, actually, I'll just do it right now. So that everyone can actually uh, grab this and make a copy. So it's in the chat there for everybody. So that if, you're, if you want to go through this process of adding your, uh, your different uh, channels to figure out what channels that you have. You can go through and build out this web of, okay, here's my channels. How's it currently implemented on my site? Um, does it require a catalog feed? What product ID does it need? Um, you can look at all the standard events and go through, do I, is it required? Is it confirmed? Um, add in your different custom events. So I just, we've seeded a few, a few relevant examples in here, but you can extend this. But so this is, this is a, it's like the web. It's the web of custom event tracking. And really it comes down to, uh, comes down to the trigger. So the trigger that you're creating in Google Tag Manager can, for the email signup or for the video play, that's the same trigger that can be applied to the tag that fires the event to go to Google Analytics, the one that goes to Facebook, the one that goes to Klaviyo, et cetera. Uh, if you are not a spreadsheet person, that might uh, make your eyes hurt because it is a very robust spreadsheet. Uh, so, but this is something that you can do to just really think through your process of what's important with your site that you think could be helpful um, to your business. So the tag cheat sheet, uh, tag cheat sheet there is dropped into uh, the chat. And I saw some people getting that, so it looks like it works. So you complete it, complete by channel, by event tag. So including your standard and advanced event tracking and go, go through that process to implement um, across the site. So let's see if I have any questions that came in here.
uh, questions. Uh, this this is actually a little older. So will this training be recorded? Um, yes. So it is recorded. It'll be shared. Uh, it'll be shared later with everybody. And uh, I think I saw a hand raised. So was that Tom? Did you have a question? Uh, if anybody has a question, feel free to. Okay. Do you typically opt to deploy Facebook tags for Shopify site via GTM instead of native integration? Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna, I'll pause here and answer some of these questions. Uh, so the answer to uh, your question, Tom, do you, we typically opt to deploy Facebook tags for a Shopify site via GTM instead of a native integration? Uh, the answer is actually no. The native Shopify integration works great. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, there's a lot of talk out there that the you know, Shopify integrations with Facebook and GA are broken and they don't work. I don't, I don't agree with that. So that's the benefit of Google Tag Manager is you can have your core events like the product view, add to cart, purchase, have those come from Shopify. So don't change a thing. And you can use Google Tag Manager to append to that. So you can, you can fire all of these additional events. So going back to the quiz example here, um, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure at CoverFX, they might have it, they might have the standard Shopify Facebook integration. And all of these events, we're just, we're appending this through GTM. So it's not like a one or the other, you can do the mix. Uh, and the, the our, what I would consider our best practice would be uh, have, have your Shopify Facebook integration and then use GTM to append to that data. The only caveat there would be if you are a subscription and you wanna split out orders or if you want to send manual advance matching to, uh, to Facebook, that's where you'd want to go to uh, the full GTM setup. So you can, you can send different purchase events based on a one-time versus a subscription and also add that uh, manual advance tracking. And our Shopify app um, comes with all that out of box. So it has all the pre-built tags, variables, et cetera. Uh, let's see a couple others. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this is a custom quiz. Um, so this is a custom quiz uh, that they used. Why is Facebook pixel admin configuration instead of you know, uh, Brian, maybe if you could just, uh, I think I might have just answered that. Let me know if I did not answer that question with a, okay, cool. Yeah, so the native Shopify Facebook works great and just use GTM to append to it with, with some of these events like this. Uh, all right. So how to do it. So create persona variables. Uh, so what user data would be valuable besides page or event data? And how can you leverage this in your remarketing campaign? So this is something that you really need to think about um, on your own. So what makes your site unique? Um, and what kind of data would be helpful? Again, I know it's focusing a lot on Facebook, but we do this a lot with Klaviyo. So Klaviyo makes it super easy to send really any data inside of Klaviyo. There's what's called um, metrics and I think properties is what they call it, but it's, it's basically the same thing. It's when you're sending an event, they can have a custom name and they can have uh, custom property data attached to it. Uh, so the, the fit by truck example is a great one I went through. Uh, apply those variables to the marketing tags. Uh, and I think I had this fit by trucks. So let me just go back here. I'm gonna show the, uh, this is our, let's see. This is a, this would be an example of, I apologize if it's too small, but this is the event. So the event name is the time on page. And then when I say variable or attribute or property, really all the same thing is time. So the time is the property and then the timer variable is basically, this is a variable. It's just, that's a native variable inside of GTM. And that's what we actually see on the front end of the site um, in the pixel helper. So this is the event name. And then you can have as many variables as you want attached to this. And then this is what you can do to build out those custom audiences inside of Facebook. Uh, in case you haven't heard, there's this custom event on the Diamondback truck cover site. You've seen this five times already. Uh, yeah, so we basically took the, the custom form, um, added this to the uh, to GTM, pushed it as a Facebook pixel helper. And again, this is data that the user is going through and collecting that. So just in case you need another reminder, that's how this one works. Uh, all right, I'm gonna pause there so I can get some water. What was your, if you just do me a favor, 
biggest takeaway um, on tactic number two of how to implement and marketing tracking to your site? Uh, what was your biggest takeaway? Yes, uh, Tom, custom data is also applicable to Google remarketing tags. That's correct. It's the nomenclature is different, but that same data I was going through, you can you can pass in uh, custom parameters for Google AdWords and the blog, ecom pages. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So we our site we're not e-commerce per se, but we have uh, we have the some of those custom variables that are we're pushing in the AdWords and pushing in the Facebook. So it doesn't matter what what type of site. So again, what if you just do me a favor? What was your biggest takeaway from that tactic? All right. Uh, any questions before I get started into tactic number three? Awesome. I appreciate it, Tom. Build personas, biggest takeaway. Advanced event tracking. Cool. All right, so tactic number three, how data quality saves you time and money. Does this look familiar to anybody? <clears throat> uh, okay, I've cut, we have a couple more takeaways coming in there. Um, so does this look familiar to anyone? The, the dreaded falling off the cliff, red line in Facebook for match content IDs or potentially pixels. And then we have Google ads tag, 90% of your Google ads activity is missing product ID. Just between these two channels alone, I think I've probably seen a, a thousand screenshots. Uh, there's so many different ways for, for data and accuracies to, to kick in. Most of the time they're correct. Sometimes they're false positives. AdWords especially, they, they seem to have a much longer delay in terms of processing data and errors and things like that. And I've seen it take like 72 hours for it to correct itself. Uh, but this is probably a very painful view for many of you. Uh, so going through the frustrations of data quality that you might have or your team might have, uh, <clears throat> conversions don't match. Neither does the pixel quality on this picture. Uh, it's the best I could find. Try to, if you just Google, just Google mismatch sock, socks uh, or sock images, there's nothing out there. This is like the only one. I wasn't going to take my own. Uh, so conversions don't match. Uh, so this is a frustration we get all the time. We'll, we'll get like a little spreadsheet where you look at your Google Analytics conversions versus your Facebook conversions compared to AdWords conversions and Critio and whatever else it might be. Uh, they're never going to be 100% accurate. But when it is a problem, when conversions are firing on different triggers, or if they're not firing consistently across all of your different uh, aspects of the site. So think about <clears throat> uh, one-time purchases versus subscription. So if you're on Bold or Recharge or others, uh, they have a, a different checkout process. So if you have conversions that are uh, set up inside of Shopify for the Shopify thank you page, they don't automatically carry over to the third-party uh, payment prov providers. So that can be a problem, especially if you are um, optimizing uh, based on spend. Uh, it's just like I mentioned before with conversions, not, so it's not just a perfect, uh, excuse me, a purchase conversion. So add to cart. So add to carts firing on wrong, wrong triggers. Um, that can be another problem if you're optimizing uh, based on add to carts. Um, affiliates that rely on accurate conversions to get paid. If, if they're not getting their conversion tracking, your affiliates are gonna move on to competitors. They just wanna get paid. Um, so if your conversions are, are missing, that's a big problem. Uh, another, another good one, uh, so purchase, or good or bad, depending on the way you look at it, but purchase conversions fire on pages. So purchase conversions fire on pages besides the actual thank you or success page. Uh, if you're doing bid optimizations based on that conversion or automatic bid optim optimizations, that can be a really expensive mistake um, that can lead to a lot of waste budget. Uh, so inaccurate data, just like I mentioned, can uh, that is sent to platforms is expensive. So it could affect your remarketing campaign. So if you're, if you're trying to remarket, so this is Raycon. Uh, headphones versus earbuds. That's a similar uh, product type, but 
I, if I was shopping for earbuds, this one's really not going to catch my eyes. I want the earbuds. Um, or if we look at uh, our prospecting campaigns. So if you are creating lookalike audiences, um, so this is two, uh, two of team members, Aaron and Thomas. Um, so the Aaron, so if we know all the Aaron's, then we were telling the other channels, like, go find some more Aaron's. Uh, we know if we're sending the right data, that's going to lead to uh, better prospecting, or excuse me, lookalike um, audiences compared to uh, broken conversions. And then the the channels don't necessarily know who to match up the errands. So then they they start sending a bunch of Thomases to your site. And we know Thomases aren't going to buy anything. Uh, so that, again, the conversions can, broken conversions can affect many different areas. Uh, your just general analysis, uh, your you know mid-funnel campaigns, your marketing campaigns, and ultimately down to your lookalike audiences. So some frustrations, uh, your tags break. So we think about data quality, like what is a frustration uh, with data quality? Tags break and they generally break, uh, sometimes they break from known issues, from code deployments or new features. Sometimes they're silent breakage, uh, breakages. So it could be a third party script that uh, is a conflict or a new theme, uh, or many changes, but there's so many different ways that tags can break. Uh, it can leave you head scratching, so you're scratching your head wondering what the heck's going on. Um, it could lead to actually you cutting spend on a campaign that might be performing great, but you, you don't know it. And maybe you don't have the, the risk appetite to actually continue on even though it says this campaign is not performing at all. Um, and then just wasting development budget time, uh, which you could otherwise be spending on future development. So when it comes to tagging, tag breaks, uh, broken tags happen all the time. Uh, just this, these are from my email inbox uh, from last year. Uh, so the you know urgent urgent emails. Take a look at this error. This this thing's broken. That you know what's going on with with our different tags and pixels. So these these happen all the time, and they just end up in emails being forwarded and Slack's going out. And if you have d distributed teams uh, that aren't in the same office, and you have contractors, it just you end up with these web of communication that takes forever for things to get resolved. Uh, this is a this is a more technical frustration. Um, it may not be something that everyone pick up on, but it's it's a more silent error and silent issue. So every event, so think about like an add to cart event that we're sending to AdWords or Facebook, or a purchase event. That event has additional parameter data. So it has the product SKU, it has the revenue for that order, it has an order ID. So these are if they are undefined, or what we've seen happen in the past, and I, this this was this happened maybe five or six months ago where we had a couple of customers where they had a purchase that went through and there was like fifty or sixty thousand dollar fraudulent purchase and it threw their campaigns and it went off they went haywire but they didn't know it so they didn't really know that there was that like one or two purchases that came from you know random country random place and Facebook was optimizing towards that uh, that's similar to an undefined it's just it's not a normal value that would go through um, so this can be dangerous and ultimately lead to, um, if you think about marketing channels outside of the Facebooks and Googles of the world, where they, they have their, um, they, most Facebook can, is probably the best at this, I think, but so they have their dashboards to give you close to real time uh, feedback on, you know, pixel quality, event quality, et cetera. It can be cumbersome to get through, but if you're working with other marketing partners that they don't have a dashboard you can log into, then you can end up getting emails like this where if their tags or pixels or parameters break, so this one, they shut off the campaigns. Like we're not, the, we're not running these campaigns any longer because we're not getting the product ID or whatever this one is. Yeah, product ID no longer exists. So they're getting that uh, back. So they're just choosing to cut off the campaigns. So for you, the brand, that's just, that's it's more of the opportunity cost than anything uh, or the hard cost if you're spending like a monthly retainer. Uh, so this pains me, especially when it happens to us, because this does happen to us and it has happened to us where things break and we don't know. And as an analyst at heart, I feel like I need to be the first one that knows when something breaks. And in us as a company, we should be the first ones alerting. We shouldn't have to wait for the marketing partner or the brand or the business owner, whoever it is. We shouldn't have to wait for them to tell us something is broken. Uh, and the data quality process, I mean, if, if you have a solid data quality process and we're, we've worked very hard at, at doing this manually um, and now uh, programmatically, but really what this can help unlock for you is if you have a process to manage your data quality, 
uh, you're able to look at like break out these different journeys. So awareness versus consideration, decision, loyalty, look alike. So all these different things we've gone through up to this point, um, you can really advance your remarketing audiences to again talk to your customer where they are um, in their journey with you as a brand. Um, and the, the other thing that you want is you want errors fixed in hours, not weeks. So broken tags waste ad spend and opportunity cost. So it's very expensive. And then number three is continual campaign optimization. So this is something that all of our customers want. They want their campaigns to be continually optimized. The big big channels out there now, I mean, they they have the machine learning. They they need this data in order to perform for you. Um, so ensuring that they have that quality data um, is critical. And you want to expand, basically expand your budget runway as much as possible. So how to create a couple examples of alerts. So how you can cr actually create alerts you have Google Analytics. So inside of Google Analytics, there is a very little known feature, custom alerts feature where you can create um, any condition. So you can create dimensions and metrics um, and set these alerts for percentage decreases, revenue decreases. Uh, you can drill down into custom events. So you can actually use the alert functionality within Google Analytics, associate this back to those events that you were creating and then get these email alerts. Granted, they're a little bit delayed, they're like 24 to 48 hours, but you can actually set these alerts up inside of GA, so you get the proactive outreach from Analytics when something breaks. This is a very basic one, just showing revenue decreases by more than 75% compared to the previous day. You can set this up, so this is like, would be a very basic, like, is our revenue track and broken? We would know, um, again, it wouldn't be immediate, more like that 24 to 48 hours. Um, there's a, this is probably even less used, uh, Facebook actually has um, automated rules as well, and they, they can be fairly robust. So this is just showing an example here of uh, conditions where the purchases, Facebook pixel purchases is smaller than 10 compared to you know, some time range, um, and have this run however you want it to run. And you can actually uh, tie actions to this, so you can have all ad sets turned off or I mean, this is pretty robust and I won't, won't go through all of these, but so you can create these rules in Facebook and then have them manage your campaigns for you. Um, I set up a couple, which I just lost them all, but I'd set up a couple examples. They're gone now, but they're all coming through on my phone um, for the alerts that were coming through. So this is a, you know, a DIY way for you can set this up for your, if you're spending, you know, spending a good amount of Facebook to do this. Um, so go that tag cheat sheet that you created, go through, uh, create, uh, fill that out, figure out which channels that you're working on that have the, the ability to set up the alerts. Uh, and there's really two things you can do. You can create event-based alerts and analytics that align with the marketing pixels, or you can block off time, you know, on a daily, weekly, monthly, hopefully not monthly basis to check all of your channel data, your conversions, audiences, and uh, event data and make sure it's accurate. Uh, so the now, the now what question, you know, getting into what, what we do at Elevar. Uh, so you have the data foundation in place. You know, we went through the prospect to, to promoter, uh, we went through really these three steps here. Let me just pause real quick since we have a bunch of questions. Uh, <laughs> website change again. The codes. Okay, cool. I think we. Uh, I'll come back at the end. Back to the end to some more questions. So now we want to actually apply them to insights. So just if you think about insights. That's really a four step where you're going to have to take this and and really run with it. Uh, analyze and apply the insights that you have from this data. So this is taking a very basic example, conversion rate, average order value session. So just the company that's doing, you know, basically half a million a year. If you just make a 10%, just a 10% increase in your conversion rate through all these different tactics, that's all, that's an extra 50 grand a year. Uh, if everything else stays the same, which I know it doesn't. So this is back in the napkin math, but this shows how like that small improvement uh, can make a big difference on a month. And if you analyze that over, over a year, uh, Optimization does take time, so you need to benchmark where you are today. Uh, where's the biggest opportunity? Start there first. Um, don't do ten. Don't like. Don't try to do ten things at one at once. Try to pick two to three, and then just build that repeatable process that you can go through with uh, with your team, um, where you analyze, implement, review, like review the decisions that you made, and then repeat. Um, remember, slow and steady. So you're not going to just you know knock your socks off uh, the next day or the next week. Uh, so the three tactics that we've seen increase conversion rates and profits are, again, the event tagging, the monitoring, uh, marketing pixel tagging. Those are three things that we are seeing brands that we work with and that we work hands on with as well uh, that we're seeing success with. And just to be like candid, I, these tactics, we don't see many people doing this at all. I mean, there's some on, on this call 
um, that are doing it. But in general, I think a lot of these tactics are not things that you see. And the way to validate it is go to your competitor site, pull up the Facebook Pixel Helper, GA Tag Assistant, Chrome Extensions, and you can, you can see for yourself. You can deconstruct what they're doing and what data they're pushing. Um, most of them aren't going to be doing it. Uh, but tags break, so that's, this is the problem that we live in, that's why we're in business, is tags break, requirements change, there's not enough time to keep up, um, and really time today is really what holds us up from continuing to do more things, is there's so much going on that, to keep, um, you know, keep us active. And to go through the cost, this is why we've invested so much of our, our time and dollars into some monitoring autom autom automation, is the cost of broken tags can be expensive. So if you're spending $20,000 a month in ad spend, uh, if you average a 3x return on ad spend, a 10%, so just going from 3 to 2.7 is a $6,000 loss in performance. And if you analyze that out, it's $72,000. So th this is a, like an expensive problem. And again, all those screenshots I sent, those were real emails coming to me, uh, like where we need to figure out how to fix those. And you can see the urgency in there. Um, it's not the hard cost either. It's the, you know, the time spent fixing tags, the opportunity cost for remarketing audiences, um, conversion rate stag stagnating due to lack of insights and action on conversion optimization. Um, and then your marketing partner turnover. So that we've seen this happen where partners will be let go because if you're evaluating, you know, your, your ROAS data or if someone else on your team is evaluating, like they're not performing. If the, if the tagging and data is not accurate, then you're, you're potentially are, are letting go of a company or a consultant or contractor that they might be doing a great job, but since tagging wasn't accurate, um, that they're being let go and you're moving on, which that has a cost to it itself, uh, ramp up time, ramp, ramp up and ramp down time. Um, so as I mentioned, that's what we do at Elevar. We help automate, we help tag and analyze. Um, we're, we're your analytics partner. Um, and that's really our focus in as a business and where we see the future of, of e-commerce optimization. Um, so if anybody's looking for help implementing some of these strategies, uh, so what things that we can do and we can promise above and beyond from this webinar and everything you'll get in the replay is, so we can help cut down the ramp up time to implement these from, you know, from months, we can cut it down to days. Uh, so things like the point and click event tracker. So this is a screenshot of our Chrome extension um, that you can, anybody can use. You don't have to be technical, it automatically creates and imports the tag and trigger in a GTM on the paid plan. This is a snapshot of the new monitoring that we just, uh, rolled out last we've had it for a couple months on beta but we just published it so this is actually monitoring where we hook in the gtm uh, we have all the air tracking coming in so we can know exactly this is real so this we had hooked it up on a, on a new site new customer just to see what was going on we got all these errors that were coming through and all these random pages because they have a lot of land custom landing pages so we can see all those errors coming through and we can uh, start fixing those and you can have that proactive process for fixing those uh, so we do the point and click of tagging for a GA, um, event analytics with alerts and comparison analysis. Uh, as I mentioned, we monitor hundreds of pixel integrations. So as long as they're in Google Tag Manager, then we can monitor them and every variable that comes out of the box. Uh, and then Google Tag Manager support, and that's, that's what we do. That's what we live on. Uh, so inside our app, we also have analytics features. Uh, I know as Patrick had mentioned the insight cards, like how clean that was. We actually have a custom funnel builder as well. Um, this is where you can combine event data with page view data. So this is an example of a custom funnel where it's using start checkout to email input, the shipping address. So what we use, we, uh, we use this for, as our customers use this for to get that granular tracking on where people are going through and falling out of the funnel. 